welcome to the On-Premise IT Roundtable podcast, the only show that dares to be both on topic and on location, or on-premise and on-premises. Each time we meet, we bring together IT luminaries to discuss a single concept. In this episode, we are discussing the storage array. Specifically, we're discussing the fact that the storage array is dead. Put a fork in it, six feet under, no more storage arrays. But you know, come to think of it, maybe the storage array isn't dead. Well, we're gonna find out. So uh, let me first introduce our panel. I'm Joe Hughes, I'm at jhughes on Twitter. You won't spell it right, so find me at fullstackgeek.net. I'm John Hudson at Twitter, I'm at underscore Desmoden. I'm Aaron Strong, my website is theaaronstrong.com and on Twitter, at theaaronstrong. I'm Howard Marks, my site's deepstorage.net. I'm a host of the Great Beards on Storage podcast and at deepstorage.net on the Twitters. Now, I know that a lot of you guys are going to be uh, taking issue with this, especially um, old graybeards like you, Howard, it's not right? not dead yet. I mean, the storage array, if the storage array is dead, doesn't that mean that you're dead? Well, <clears throat> to really answer that question, I think the storage array, the storage administrator's job isn't managing the storage array so much as making sure other people don't do stupid things with their data and being putting up the guardrails to then let other people use storage. It's not ours anymore, it's just something we protect. Right, don't you think that has moved to the application? So now the storage admin needs to know more about the, I guess, the data, the type, and then be able to manage that? They should, the problem is application developers are in their 20s and haven't made big enough mistakes to understand that they need a belt and suspenders and thumbtacks. Go big and go home. <laughs> and to a factor, there was an element that the arrays did this to themselves because, you know, th many of the array different uh, vendors offered, you know, arrays that were very hands off. In some cases, they were the ones feeling support for it. And so essentially a lot of, you know, admins essentially never really grew a tremendous amount of, of physical attachment to the internals of these things. Well, and the, array looked vendors, pretty. the array vendors only ever had to iterate once every three to five years to actually put any advancements into the platforms. Yeah, and those 20-something application developers iterate a lot faster than that, don't they? Oh, their career was, like, swapped by that point, you know. And, but, I mean, to your, to your point, I mean, essentially, is it true to assume that array, arrays exist for the same reasons that chassis exist? Yes. And that, essentially, it's a, it's a platform to, to sell tape cartridges, you know, or printer cartridges over time and, and just keep repeatedly getting new modules and new cards into them? Is, is that the same... Does, do arrays have the same uh, reason for existing? It's just, it's a, it's a known life cycle. That's why it's still there, because it's the norm, and that's what's going to continue until there's something to change that market and to change the need. Well, you know, we are paranoid by nature as storage admins, and so the thing that has worked before, again, always seems like a better idea than something completely new. Oh, but my storage admin is paranoid every time he goes on a cruise because he's afraid I'm going to automate him out of a job. <laughs> Well, maybe it's a good uh, point to uh, jump back in and just ask, what is a storage array? So we heard, is it just a frame to sell us uh, cartridges or modules or blades or something? Or, or SSDs so, in this case. So what is it that's dead, is, uh, or not dead, as the case may be? What is a storage array? Um, Aaron, what is a storage array? To me, uh, the storage array is a big black box that has uh, a couple CPUs in it and then a whole bunch of disks um, mm -hmm. that give it storage, and by, I think that's changing though, as time is progressing, um, I think that's getting smaller and smaller, and, um, and, and the performance is getting better. Okay, so, so is it a black box, Joe? No, the storage array is not a black box uh, to me, but it is, uh, the storage array that should be dead, that is not dead yet, uh, is the legacy architecture of, you know, standalone controllers that are handling, you know, IO and and cannot do anything outside of what they were initially built for five years ago. But don't you think, I mean, there's also a factor that, for the same reason that, that large sun systems got replaced by little Linux boxes, you know, a lot of the cost and the complexity was due to the fact that we needed a tremendous amount of protection from whatever, right? And now that you're basically able to distribute data in, in a much cheaper, easier way, the, the dependency on having this monolithic 
box that can protect you from you know the apocalypse just isn't really a problem anymore. Sure, but their but their market and their target customers are the folks that read best practices. They want the this applies to ninety percent of us out there because then that means I'm protected and I don't actually have to know how to drive this thing well. So yeah, I'm hearing that the storage array is a is a box either for components or and this is kind of interesting, it's a metaphor for protection of those components. A security blanket. Yes. It, it's, it, yeah, it's a, it's a dedicated piece of hardware we feel safe about that, okay. that stores data and provides some services. And, you know, the one thing I will say in support of that is if you look, I, when I was at a previous uh, employer, one of the huge upswings we saw in, in Fiber Channel was VMware. Because essentially, and I worked in shops like this, where essentially someone would be trying to bring, you know, a virtualization into production, and it was kind of this negotiation of, well, okay, we'll do it, but you got to put it on, on something really solid, right? You got to put it on a fiber channel, right? And so there was this kind of, hey, we're willing to take risks at the application if the storage is really, really, really solid. And maybe if the software got really, really solid, you'd be willing to take more risk on the storage. And right? that's exactly where we are now, where, you know, if you look at the, the hyper-converged market, which is provide storage via software on the servers, not the dedicated box of reliability. Yeah. <clears throat> we have more, we, we've spread the risk across eight individually less reliable pieces. Yes, we've moved into that that application now where we're managing all of our storage, and I think that's where everyone wants to be. We don't want to manage the underlying hardware anymore. We just want to understand and go into our GUIs, I guess. <laughs> yeah, the problem is to some extent storage is hardware because the bits have to rest someplace when the power gets turned off. So that's the question. I mean, back to my question. Is is a storage array a thing, or is a storage array a metaphor? Well, a storage array is a con as a concept. Well, no, I... I, I got to say, I disagree. For me, I think a storage, a storage, I mean, when you're talking about a storage array, a frame, you're talking about essentially a mainframe. I mean, that's what, I mean, that, that's the kind of, and I don't mean that from a functionality, but that's the mindset, right? That's the, no, it that's, even works as a functionality, though. Think about it. What is a mainframe? It's a centralized computer yes. that multiple systems use. Yep. Isn't yep. that the definition yes. of yeah. a storage yep. network? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yep. that, but if we're talking about the symmetrics style array, that's true. If we talk about the Clarion style array, the dual controller box, it's less centralized. If we start saying... It's I'm just a have, little mainframe. Yes, but, but no, it's a mini computer. It's a PDP-11. It's not a 360. But I have 10 of them instead of having one big box and an aggregate, they cost less. And the risk of one failure is less. So I'm willing to live with the reliability of each one being less. The next step is to go scale out and say, it's a server and servers are way less re reliable than dual controller systems but I have so many, I have cattle, I don't have pets. Well, so, let's, does that mean the frames disappear and the mini computers exist, or are the mini computers more, more uh, less resistant to change, they go to the distributed model and the frame huggers stay that way? The frame huggers stay that way because the mainframes stay there. Yes. Your bank statement is coming from a mainframe in 2030. You know what? I, I, the effects. One of the, one of the best things I said totally by accident was someone asked me when Fiber Channel would be dead, and I said, F, you know, um, you know, uh, 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 what's a fiber, uh, mainframe uh, Fiber Channel? Fi I, them first, right? Yeah. I mean, because you have a, you have a, a, a you know, there's a, a kind of a feeding chain in the market, right? And essentially, until that goes away, there's really, no, that makes total sense. There's no single best solution. It's different horses for different courses. Yes. For mainframes. Storage that looks like a mainframe is the right thing to do. So do you think we'll get into like a hybrid at some point? Oh, I think there's all sorts of hybrid models developing. The, you know, there's the, 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 two years ago, there were three models. The monolithic, the dual controller, the scale out shared nothing. There's all sorts of things in between coming up in the next couple of years that are better in ways. Okay, but when we when we when when Sun died and we kind of made that transition, there was a point where there was a lot of us still hugging our Sun gear, and there was a, there was a flipping point where essentially, you know, if you didn't have a lot of Linux distributed experience, you would have a hard time finding a job. You would necessarily even 
um, not advertised your depth of sun experience on your resume. And there was that tipping point where it, it didn't matter about the, the big shops. There were so many little shops doing it the new way that it became the swarm, right? Mm -hmm. So when does that happen for the frame? The price. The price point is going to be what drives most enterprises to get off of the legacy model or even the dual controller model. Once it becomes so cost effective to care less about the shared risk that stretches the entire platform and they can't sell the big box price. I, I contend it started already. The HCI's, you know, there's 50,000 HCI customer companies. It started, but it's gonna be a long process. It, oh, nothing happens fast. No. So, so then are we talking about a, the, a, a secondary process of pets becoming cattle? Or essentially when, when applications become cattle, now, now you don't have that same shared risk anymore? I, I don't think it's the, the, it's not quite the same argument as the pets versus cattle. It's the, as long as it works, I don't care. Yeah, because in a lot of ways, corporate America only gives lip service to cost. Yes. Doesn't this um, sort of ignore, though, the history of storage? I mean, we're, let's be honest, you know, we're, we're longtime storage people. Sto the reason that a lot of cool technologies haven't taken off wasn't a technology reason, it was uh, just conservatism of storage. Yes. We are a conservative industry. We don't want new things. We don't trust new things. I mean, I am guilty myself of saying, you know, literally, you can't use anything that hasn't existed for less than five years if you're in storage because I just won't put my data on something I don't trust. So isn't that conservatism going to drive us to continue to use storage arrays? So I used to really believe in that and, and found a lot of comfort in what you just said. And, and then VMware came around. And you know, after years of teaching fleets of people like how to carve up disks and how certain things should lay on certain spindles and so forth, VMware shows up and not only they're throwing the entire operating system on one spindle, they're putting like 30 operating systems on one spindle. And all that came, all that just blew up and there was a performance penalty, there was a loss of, of, of finesse and everyone was like, okay. So in that case, there was no resistance to it. It was the easy button. It was the easy button. You still got what you needed. It, it was, was good a enough. performance it, but it wasn't enough for anyone. So to there use. was a compelling reason for people to move beyond. Yes. And it's the same with containers, by the way. I mean, containers are the worst aggregators of I.O. ever. Yeah, but, but as we start, as companies move into containers, easy button. then the storage they need is going to be different. Or as any storage and, platform will provide that performance, they don't have to care. Yeah. So on that point, what is killing the traditional, conventional black box storage array? Is it, is it changes in attitudes? Is it changes in value and cost? Or is it about new applications and use cases? Flexibility. It's all about flexibility. It's all about, when, when I was running data centers, my, the, one of the biggest problems I had was I was expected to buy gear give it to a PO that was part of a project, knowing that in three years, it was going to be running a completely different application that didn't actually pay for it and would need different inputs and outputs. And so you're always hedging these bets. So anytime you bought anything that was rigid, it was scary because you knew you were going to have to shoe fit that into, you know, in something else later. Now you start making those things more configurable, more flexible, and now you have this freedom to actually, you know, the, all this friction between the business and the IT goes away if IT can operate at the speed of business. Are you guys going to nod yeah. along with that? Um, I was going to just say I, I kind of agree with that. Um, I like the flexibility, and it kind of goes with what uh, Joe was talking about from a price perspective because then you're just buying what you want to use. Yes. Right? Yeah. And if you buy the wrong thing, it's not as much of a penalty. Right. right. right? It's not much of a risk. And, when we, and the new applications... Don't need the data services the old applications do. If you run Hadoop or MongoDB, then you don't need really good snapshots on the underlying storage because that technology is built into that layer. It's not that those new applications are going to take over 30% of the applications in your data center. It's that once that toe got in the door and you saw yeah. that it worked in that distributed parts can fail model. Yes. Then when your virtualization guys go, I want to run vSAN because I don't want to have to bother you every time I need storage. You're more willing to go, yeah, I've seen that model work before. Well, 
So the, I mean, storage was was first with the legacy model. Then networks started to change and became distributed. Then the hosts and the virtualization layers started to be more distributed. Now the applications are getting more distributed. There are people that are coming in that are writing the applications and having a, a stop in their career at a company that is shorter than the cycle it would take to refresh a storage array. Mm. As long as they get the performance that they need that's there, then, then there's not necessarily the need for the storage array if they can buy something that is more agile for a platform that will, that will deliver that for them hmm. as they move their container from their laptop to production. So it sure sounds like you guys are agreeing. The storage array is dead, or at least dying. Dying. Dying, slow death, yes. The, the challenge is, is that that one, um, shops that are, are very, very, very comfortable with certain technologies have very little reason to change. So you're gonna have a lot of shops, there's still a lot of places to run mainframes, right? Are there many startups on mainframes? Probably not, right? But anyone running them loves them, right? Same with Fiber Channel and same with these frames. And so it's gonna be new companies that do it differently. I think for the most part, existing companies will probably continue to buy frames for, for a long time. To, to Howard's point on the fact that you know it's going to be 2030 and we're still getting financial statements printed off of mainframes, it's it's still the legacy of no one ever got fired for buying IBM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, still there. It's definitely dead, but it's going to take some time for it to totally be. Well, it probably won't for ever to, be for it to realize it's dead. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it'll at it'll some point someone will extinct. tell the storage edge. It'll always gone. be there. So does that mean that the storage industry is dead? Oh, no, the storage industry is exciting. There's all sorts of people coming up with things you should buy because you don't want to buy a frame anymore. No, the challenge is, is that you might see certain aspects of the storage industry get carved off into, into other newer places as we start to see more converged infrastructure and more kind of merged functionality. But because storage is always going to have a, a true physics component to it, right? there is going to be some media of some sort. It, 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 it's going to exist in a similar f way for, for a, a significantly long time. Bird's it, gotta fly, fish gotta swim, bits gotta live somewhere. I was gonna say, it's, it's changing a lot faster and it's, it's the fact that you know, now you can actually do block versus file versus object storage versus you know, multi-cloud and it's the availability of all of these platforms out there, you, know, you can kind of just dip your toe in the water to do anything and, and just try it. And how many new people today are just their very first time that they're using a system? It's an instant on EC2. Yes, they right. Know. And so they've never they've never owned any. Like I've met with startups who, who they have no they have no gear, yeah. and they've never had any gear. Right. They do everything in in different cloud platforms. I would love to not have a data center. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're building those EC2 instances, you're not caring about the underlying architecture. And you don't know any better. <laughs> you know, when you're at that level, you don't want to. Mm -hmm. There's a whole reason why you're moving into mm -hmm. that, that platform. The bill gets signed off by someone else. And then you discover EBS provision IOPS. <laughs> And well, why does your bill go up? Well, but let me say that, that one of the, the, the misconceptions is, is that your day-to-day -day life changes when you move your stuff to a cloud. And I, I, I saw this in my brother's shop. It was the funniest thing. It was like, you had your own data center, you SSH into boxes, you did stuff. And you moved into the cloud, you SSH into boxes, and you did stuff, but the boxes were virtual, right? I mean, it's like, you still have to troubleshoot stuff, you still have to look at things. Like, a lot of that, that, that kind of in and out of the daily care and feeding doesn't change, but you've created an abstraction layer and you've pushed, it's, you've pushed it off to someone else. Right, it's, it's the, whole, the entirety of the landscape changing from everything that's physical being now virtualized and being uh, a layer of obfuscation to get to all of it, and it's, it's now distributed everything other than the storage. And, and, that, and that requires that storage be virtualized and distributed in the exact same fashion, yes. and frames don't play that way. All right, so the storage array is dead, right? Should be. All right. Should be. Well, there, you heard it here first, folks. Um, uh, uh, amazingly enough, we've got a, a panel of uh, storage-focused experts here who all agree the storage array is dead. But hopefully you're not dead. So thank you very much for listening to the On-Premise IT Roundtable podcast from Gestalt IT. If you enjoyed this discussion, remember to subscribe, rate, and review the show in iTunes since that really helps our visibility. And please share the show with your friends. This podcast was brought to you by GestaltIT.com, your home for IT coverage from across the enterprise. For show notes and more episodes, go to GestaltIT.com slash podcast. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.